So we're back, and now we're going to start incorporating some of our enemies here because we want our player to have some challenge. You know, this is much of a game if there's just one platform he's running back and forth on. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I guess this is you guys like to play with little fidget spinners and things like that. So uh, I guess maybe this is a fun game, you know, just moving around on one platform. But uh, it's not my cup of tea, so let's let's jazz this thing up a little bit. Uh, I've added a new enemy script. Uh, I've got my scripts folder subdivided into enemy scripts and player scripts. And I'm starting off with a new enemy script called enemy jumper. And that code can be found on my website. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go into our uh, game sprites, enemy sprites. And I have two states. For my enemy jumper I have this first state which is this idle state where he's just kind of you know just just chilling you know he's not really doing anything and then I want him to transition when he jumps up in the air I want him to transition into this state so my character my my uh my enemy is going to jump up in the air. So I'm going to start with this state, just like we made the player states in the animator. I'm now going to just drag this up and uh, put it here and call this um, jumper underscore idle. And I'll save that. And then I want to make a second clip and this is going to be jumper underscore attack okay so i got my two states and i can delete these and let's see which is which here oh, i should have looked this first this is enemy jumper zero this is enemy jumper idle okay so this is my this is the one I want to use as my controller so I'm going to just call this e jumper my controller so I know what's what and I've got the attack state and the idle state this one I do not need And I want to organize these. So using the control key, I'm selecting them and I'm putting them into my enemy animations folder. Okay. So first thing I want to do is just grab one of these guys and pull them out. Well, let's give them a platform first. You know, this brings me to the idea of creating prefabs. So I've already created my ground, right? It's got its box collider. It's working nicely uh, with the character, with the player. It's got the attributes I want it to have right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my assets folder and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this prefabs. The benefit of a prefab is it's an object that you've created that has attributes that you want to clone or make multiple copies of. So I'm going to take my ground from the hierarchy here, and I'm going to just drag it down here into the prefab folder, and it automatically turns into a prefab. How do I know it's a prefab? Because it has this blue cube here. Um, so that's really nice because now check this out. I can just grab another one and pull it out over here, and I can grab another one and pull it out over here. And I can start to build my level a little bit, okay, just using these prefabs. And if I make a change to one of them, like I change the size of this, oh, I don't know, um, maybe I edited the box collider on this one so that it's not the whole platform, but it's just, just the top. So if I edit the box collider on this one and I hit apply, that's going to update all of the prefabs. See how they all have that modified box collider now? So that's another great advantage of using prefabs is that if you do make a mistake or you forgot to add something and you make a change, you can just hit apply and it will apply it to all the prefabs. 
Okay, so let's make our enemy now. We've got our um, enemy sprites, and I'm just going to grab one of these guys out. And he's a little guy here. But that's only because I, I failed to export him at the right size. So he's super tiny. But hopefully you're not going to have that same issue. I'm just going to rename him enemy underscore jumper. And yeah. Oops. Remember, it has that really crazy enemy underscore jumper. You have to click after you rename that. You have to click somewhere in this inspector to get that to lock in. So we've got our enemy jumper. And let's go into those uh, that animator that we started making for him, enemy animation. See, here's that animator controller. Let's drag that onto him. Okay, so he's got his animator. He's going to need a rigid body 2D because we want gravity to influence him and pull him down. He's going to need a box collider 2D. So bang, we'll add that in. And I'm going to zoom in on him for a second because he's so small. And we've got this edit box collider. See this little button here? I don't want him like balancing on his tail when he hits this thing. I want him to fall so that he's resting like here and the tail is sort of sloshing off the edge. Um, so this is better for the box collider to be more that shape, right? So he'll sit on his, his body, his main body. All right, so uh, we've got that going. Uh, we want him to, uh, you know, be able to interact with the player. And what we're going to do is we're going to tag him. So I'm going to add a tag to him. And that tag is going to be deadly. And what we'll do is we'll tag anything deadly that we want to uh, hurt our player. So I'm going to go down here and choose deadly from the list of tags. So now he's tagged deadly. He's got his rigid body. He's got his box collider. He's got his animator. Let's go into his animator here and make sure it's set up correctly. Uh, here's his animator. And if we look at it, it's basically just got the one state, jumper idle. And I need jumper attack to be in here. So I'm pulling jumper attack up into the mix. And I want him to be in this state when he's not jumping. And I want him to be in this state when he is jumping. So I'm going to create a transition to the attack state. And remember, we got to get rid of all this nonsense here. Uh, the life of a 2D game creator. It's never easy. And then back, make transition back to idle. And we'll get rid of these again. And what are the param what's the parameter going to be? Let's just say we'll have a bool and we'll make it attack. We either are attacking or we're not attacking. If we are attacking, then we're transitioning from idle to attack. So my condition should be attack is true. And then when attack is false, we're going to transition back to the idle state. All right. Sweet. We got that going. Now, just like anything else, we need a script that's going to control this, right? This is just us setting it up in the animator, but now we need to control it with the script. And in my enemy scripts folder, I have the enemy jumper script. So let's go into that in mono develop and let's take a look at what's happening here. So uh, first of all, I've got you know, this public float force Y 300 F. So this is going to be controlling this force Y. It's going to be controlling how, how high he jumps. We're accessing his rigid body. Uh, this is all the enemy jumper now, not the player anymore. We're, we're doing a similar animator controller, right? So we want to access those two components, just like we did with the player. Void awake is the same thing as void start. 
get component rigid body two get component animator so we're accessing those components with these two variables and in void start we're going to start the coroutine attack and what is that coroutine or what is that function so a coroutine is kind of uh, a function that is running simultaneously with other functions uh, which is why they call it a coroutine whenever you see this i enumerator this deals with a function that that is is waiting or pausing or deals with time so our attack function right starts off with this yield return new wait for seconds random range two to four so essentially we're creating a pause in the attack uh, between two and four seconds. So you can change these numbers to make yours more variable. If you want it to make the pause longer or shorter, you can play with that. And then force Y in the attack is also a random range from 250 to 550. So this is controlling how high the, the jumper is, is, is going. Uh, and then, of course, we have to actually add that force, right, to his rigid body. So this is where we set the value of force Y, and this is where we use force Y to actually bound him up into the air. And when we do that, we want to access the animator component and set our bool attack to true, right? That's what we just set up in here, our transition from jumper idle, right? Attack is true. Right, so here in the code, we're making sure that that's happening here in the attack. And then we're waiting for 1.5 seconds. Now, you might have to play with that number, but that's the time it's going to take before we go back to and transition back to the idle state because we're setting the bool now attack to false. And then, of course, we're starting the coroutine all over again. And so it's just continuously in a state of attack. Now, this part I wrote just in case we wanted to create a, a player that could shoot and kill this enemy. We've got this in here, but you don't necessarily need that because we're probably, we might not get to that. All right, so here we go. We got all that code working. We know what it's doing. And now what's the final step? The final step is to take the script that we wrote and did I save it? Control S save and we're going to take that script and we're going to pull it up to the enemy jumper and we should see it and there it is the enemy jumper script and let's take a look and see uh, whether this is working we'll play oh can't see him there he is and he's jumping and he's changing his animation look at this it's all working like a beautiful beautiful something that works beautifully oh glorious okay hopefully you, you kept up if not you can go back and watch it again